Both are internationally recognized on the fashion scene. Sex in the City stylist Patricia Fields ignites trends with her edgy, eccentric looks. It could be like a suit jacket. Helen Yarmack's Russian couture sable wraps and chinchilla furs cater to models, actors, and even heads of state, to designers known for being bold and daring. It's really about the attitude. The women stitched together a relationship years ago when Fields began dressing Sex in the City characters in Yarmack's furs. Yep. Among the first luxury goods indicative of the new Russia. For Russia, um, fashion is really important. It's part of the life. Since the 90s, Russian fashion has been stereotyped as flagrant, flashy, and label-oriented. Wealth and status denied during Soviet times, displayed in layers of bright colors and bling. Didn't we use... But for all those critics, Field says the Russian culture is somewhat of a personal inspiration. People that I know from the Russian culture have just influenced me in a way of underscoring and underlying that, yes, life is to enjoy. Joy. And from the enjoyment and that attitude, creativity comes. The Russian fashion stereotype may no longer be a true reflection. It appears many are swapping in their overly embellished, status-conscious style for a more laid-back but yet luxury look. A coat of a season. Boutique owner and Moscow native Katerina Frankenberg says now that Russia's post-Soviet image is comprised of success and wealth, Russian clients have become more reserved, opting for more of a low-key fashion statement. Way toned down, they're much more subtler, they wear, they're wearing plainer designers. They're not necessarily wearing the same designer head to toe as they used to. And while glamour very much remains a factor, Russians say they've gone from copying trends to creating their own. U.S. is about instruction. And Russia, it's about improvisation. Distinct in style, but threaded between both countries, is the desire to look good. Marina Portnaya, Russia Today, 